Hey everybody, and welcome back to the channel. So if you're new here, hey, my name is Nicole. My channel, we talk about womanhood, we talk about wife life, we talk about biblical femininity, we talk about self-care, homemaking, wellness, fitness. We touch on lifestyle over here, and we talk about a little bit of everything, and we keep it authentic, and we keep it real over here. We keep it honest and straightforward. I am a wife. I've been married to my husband for 22 years. We have three children. Uh, my son is 26. I have two daughters that are 22 and 19. When I did the poll on my uh, community tab on YouTube, I asked the girls what would they be more, what would they want first? Would they want a video about wife life or would they want a video about my body care and skincare routine and so y'all it was very close okay it was very very close however the body and skincare people the body and skincare um both got it so we're still gonna do a wife life post but we'll do it it'll be the extra video we have for next week so stay tuned for that after the weekly vlog will be the wife life video i wanted to talk more in depth about not just my body and skincare routine, but I also wanted to talk about the ways I take care of myself. A few of you commented on, um, a few of you commented and asked how, you said you wanted to see videos on how I took care of myself. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. How I manage self-care as a woman in her 40s who's an empty nester who is rediscovering herself. So if that's the type of content that you're looking for, then stay tuned. My first aspect of self-care that I focus on is physical self-care. Physical self-care is going, my physical self-care consists of what I eat, my meal prepping and meal planning, my workout routine, my skincare routine, my body care routine. It also consists of um, my sleep hat how I'm recovering from said workout routine. So let's get into what we're eating. I don't meal prep all the time, but I do meal plan. So on Sundays, y'all know I sit down with my planner and I plan out meals for the week. Now I'm not a person that counts calories anymore. The only way I'll count calories is if I'm training for a show. Now I focus more on eating intuitively, which, is, which just means I listen to my body when it comes to eating. So I eat the foods that my body loves. The things that I focus on that I eat are lean protein, okay? I do eat meat. I'll eat um, chicken at times. Most of the time I focus on fish. You have to eat the foods that make your body feel good. The skin care and body care portion of your self-care routine, the first step to glowy skin, hydrated skin, is to hydrate the inside of your body. So that's with water, that's with certain fruits and vegetables, you know, that you eat. Hydrate your body because what's going on on the inside is gonna show on the outside, whether it's good or bad. So make sure I'm hydrating my body. I do not believe in depriving yourself. I don't believe in depriving yourself. I do believe in being disciplined. So I know that, you know, with my caloric intake, I know that I can tolerate sugar in my diet according to the calories. However, intuitively speaking, my body does not feel the best when I eat sugar. So I try to steer clear of it. There are times where I'm just like, whatever, it's gonna be what it is. And so during those times, I know that I'm just gonna have to deal with the consequences that come such as sweat, sweating, night sweats, I'll have them. Just want you to know that if you eat sugar, if you drink alcohol, things like that, you will have hot and you have hot flashes and night sweats, it makes them worse. Because sugar, for whatever reason, makes those things worse. So I don't deprive myself. I love a sweet tea. Y'all know that. I love sweet tea. I'll have some. I just know not to have, I can't have a full half gallon of sweet tea. You know what I'm saying? A cup or two is okay. And I'm not drinking a cup or two every day. I'm not drinking a cup or two every week. But, you know, don't deprive, I don't deprive myself of anything, but I am disciplined. My workout routine, y'all know I'm a big workout girl, I'm a big gym girl. So the days that I'm not training, I'm walking. I'm walking every day, but my walks are longer on the days that I'm not training. And it's just the active rest, the active recovery thing that I like to do. Walking is so underrated. You can do other things too if you want, 
but walking is very underrated and it's very good. It's not hard on our bodies at all. As we age, ladies, our muscle mass and our bone health declines. So lifting weights, lifting heavier weights, any kind of strength training or resistance training helps to strengthen that muscle, helps to grow that muscle, strengthen that muscle, and also helps to strengthen those bones and protect us from things like osteoporosis. You know, we have to strengthen our heart muscle, which, you know, sometimes can be affected as estrogen declines as we get older, you know, as we deal with perimenopause and menopause and different things like that. So I would encourage you, if you have not started incorporating strength training into your routine, lift heavy. You also need to focus on recovery. I am very big on these things. Y'all know I love the infrared sauna. The infrared sauna has so many wonderful properties, has so many wonderful benefits that actually helps me and it's a part of my weekly self-care. I am in the sauna at least three to four times a week. I have a membership and so I'm in there three to four times a week. I absolutely love it. It causes me to relax and slow down. I am not a person that can brush. Okay, it does not make me feel good in my body. It does not make me feel good in my mind. I have to be regulated. You know, I have to slow down and be regulated. The sauna helps me do that. I focus on skincare. Skincare is a big part. Skincare and body care are a big part of my self care routine. Y'all already know that this girl loves skincare and body care. Okay, y'all already know that. Body care, skincare, and hydration go hand in hand. I know you had beautiful skin in your 20s and you barely drank water. We are not in our 20s anymore, okay? We are women of mature age and we have to do the things that make sense in our body right now. I will drink between half a gallon and a gallon of water to a day. Now, you don't have to drink that much, okay? You don't have to drink that much. You drink what what works best for your body. Whatever you you feel like works best for your body or whatever you and your doctor have discussed that works best for your body, you do that. But because I sweat a lot and because I work out and because if I eat sugar during the day, I may have night sweats, I can tend to get dehydrated. And so for me, I just have to drink a lot of water. And I see the benefits of drinking so much water. You know, I have a shower and body care routine that I do. So I use, I double cleanse. I double cleanse my face and I also double cleanse my body. My first body wash is typically a cleansing one, like just stripping all that old stuff off of your body. This stuff right here, for me, it works better than Dr. Bronner's, okay? So I'll use this first and then I'll go in with a moisturizing body wash. So I love Dove's Shea and Vanilla body wash. I love that. I love any Dove product. I love any of the Method um, body washes. I have a routine that I use during the day and I also have one that I'll use at nighttime. And I also will use a scrub. I typically scrub my body about three to four times a week just because I am, I like to exfoliate. I love to exfoliate. You get compliments on your skin like, oh my gosh, your skin is so soft. Or when my husband is rubbed up beside me and he's just rubbing on my arm because my skin is so soft because I exfoliate. Okay, it better be soft. All this money I spend on body care. After I come out of the shower and pat myself dry, I allow myself, you know, time to dry off in all the areas. You gotta make sure the girl is dry, okay? You gotta make sure she's dry. And then I use, y'all saw me use, the clinical deodorant that I use. And then I also put a little witch hazel down on my girl on the outside, on the outside, down in the crevices, down in the little folds, okay? Not on the inside. And okay? we're not doing that on the inside or on the lips. We're not doing any of that. You're not letting the girl dry out. Your pH balance can be thrown off. The way you can check your pH balance is I bought, because I make sure my girls know it's important. I buy, I bought strips that you can get off Amazon. I'll link them in the description box below. But there are strips that you can test your urine in to see how alkaline your body actually is and how acidic your body actually is. I drink lemon water. I drink chlorophyll. Then after that, I make sure that I really indulge in body care. Y'all know I love body care. I make sure that I put on a really good, in the fall and the winter, I like to focus on thicker, more richer emollient body butters. 
So I put on a really good body butter. Most of the time it's a shea body butter or it could be my Josie. I use my body cream here lately. I've been using my shea butter. Then I'll add on my butter. Then I'll add on my body cream. So I'll use like a shea butter, um, shea body butter, like thick, you know, a thick one. And then I'll add on my body cream. So I'll use like my Josie Mabron more so body cream. They call it body butter, but it's more like a body cream. And then on top of that, I'll use a body oil. The combination, perfect. Like you talking about hydrated, glowy skin? Because we still want it in the fall and in the winter. It's not just for summer and spring. Perfect combination. I put on something nice and soft up against my skin. Y'all know how I feel about that. I put something nice and soft up against my skin. And then I go to bed, girl. Or either I'll get ready for the day. But I make sure I take those moments out to, I romanticize every aspect of self-care. I believe in romanticizing every aspect of your life. Your self-care should be romanticized as well in all the areas, um, in just all the areas. Self-care also always won't feel uh, won't feel good all the time. The, but the parts that do feel good, we can romanticize those parts. Another way that I practice self-care is I make sure that I keep up all my doctor's appointments and things like that that I need to have. As a woman in her 40s, you need to make sure that you are checking in with your doctor every year. Like you need to make sure you're getting your physical done every year. You need to know your, you need your blood work done. You need to know where your numbers are. You need to know your vitamin D level. You need to know your cholesterol levels. You need to know what your BMI is. You need to know all of these things. There are a plethora of things that I'll list over here that as a woman in her forties, you need to know. And to my nieces and to my nieces and um, young ladies that are in their twenties and thirties that watch me, you need to know these things as well. Start early. Okay, start early, all right? A lot of these things I started in my 20s, I've had to evolve how they look over time, but the routine is there, okay? The routines are there. You need to know what your blood pressure is, okay? You need to know what these different things are. You need to be scheduling your mammogram and going to it every year. I know that they are aggravating. If you're 45 plus, you need to be getting your colonoscopy done. If you have a greater chance of colon cancer, you know, and you're younger, you need to be getting that done at a younger age. You need to be able to learn how to manage stress. There are times where we just gonna have stress in our lives. There are, we can't control that. We need to learn how to manage that. I learned how to manage my stress through working out, through practicing physical self-care, through making sure I eat enough, making sure I drink enough, making sure I take care of my body inside and both out. Skincare. I'm a skincare. <laughs> I was a skincare junkie until my face was breaking out and I went to the dermatologist and figured out what was going on. And she told me I was doing too much. And so I, I y'all know, if you follow me on the vlog, you watch the vlogs, you know, I was talking big trash. I was talking trash. I was like, this lady don't know what she's talking about, blah, 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 but I had to give it time. And so my skincare routine has evolved. So nighttime skincare routine is the secret sauce, okay? So I double cleanse at night. I use a cream cleanser, a cream or oil, cream oil based cleanser to cleanse my face. Just get all the dirt and all the, uh, you know, if I wear makeup that day, get all the dirt and all the makeup off. And then I'll go in with a foam and wash. I use La Roche-Posay because their products have, you know, their products works best on my skin and they're non-commodogenic, so meaning they won't clog your pores because I have oily skin. Other than that, I will use twice a week, I use an exfoliating, I use Paula's Choice Exfoliating AHA and BHA um, toner. So I'll use that on the nights that I don't use that. Most nights I'll just use my retinoids that she prescribed me. That is it. In the mornings when I get up, I used to do like a full skincare routine. I don't do that anymore. In the mornings when I get up, I wash my face with water after I brush my teeth and floss. I wash my face with water, I dry that off, and then I put on my moisturizer and my sunscreen for the day. That's it. When I tell you that has cleared my skin up and help reduce breakouts tremendously. Also, as it relates to physical self-care, I make sure that I focus hard on recovery. So my recovery process looks like stretching. It looks like foam rolling. You know I go to a neuromuscular therapist once a month 
um, sometimes twice a month, depends on how I'm feeling in my body. But I found that I only need to go to him once a month when I'm keeping up with my regular sessions in the infrared sauna. And then I also make sure that I focus on my sleep hygiene. Y'all know I've been telling you that I have been suffering from insomnia because it happens, you know, as a perimenopausal woman. However, I've noticed that I reduce the insomnia when I drink enough throughout the day. I drink enough throughout the day and I take my vitamins at night that I need to take. We'll get into the vitamins next. I take my vitamins at night that I need to take in order to make sure I have a restful sleep. I make sure my bedroom is nice and cool, 72 or below, and I also sleep with my fan on. Um, and I read a little something, either the Bible or a, you know, a light book or something before I go to bed. And I also journal at nighttime before I go to bed to kind of clear my mind of everything. Physical self-care is probably the biggest category we got. That's why I started off with it first because it entails, it's physical self-care, but it's broken down in so many different components. I didn't intend for this physical self-care portion to be so long. We might have to do a part two. <laughs> Another thing that I do focus on self-care is I take my vitamins. Take your vitamins, girl. At our ages, we need to be taking vitamin D. We need to be taking a B-complex vitamin. We need to be taking magnesium. We also need to be taking omega-3 fish oil. I take all of these. I also take a daily multivitamin, which also has a probiotic in there. It has, you know, lots of vegetables and things like that, but it also has a probiotic. But I also take a separate probiotic. We need to be taking these vitamins as women in our 40s. And at nighttime, I make sure that I take magnesium glycinate. It helps regulate so many things in our bodies. Blood pressure, your nervous system, heart health. It helps with so much these things i typically don't talk about because i'm like people know this but people don't know this is my multivitamin that i take the b complex vitamin that i take the probiotic that i use me and my girls both use these omega-3 fish oil that i use even in primrose oil vitamin d okay with k2 in it the all natural supplement blood builder b, vitamin b12 and vitamin c in here because you need vitamin c to help absorb b12 okay the garlic oil supplement these have chlorophyll and parsley in it so it's very much good for detoxing and deodorizing your body from the inside okay also take this adrenal health um this adrenal health at nighttime before i hit the bed i'm taking ashwagandha I'm taking magnesium. That's what I take to help with sleep and recovery and making sure I get the best sleep possible. I know that's a lot of vitamins, but girl, I get you a pill organizer, okay? You keep it cute. Keep it cute and, you know, make self-care romanticize it. Get you a pill organizer. This is the one that I use because I got pills that I take morning, noon, and night. So you can break them down, girl. I'll link this in the description box below. So my mental self-care routines consist of me journaling. It also consists of me protecting my peace. I journal daily. It helps to get those thoughts out of your brain, what's going on in your brain. I also brain dump because that helps to take the load off your mind and write down everything it is that you need to do. I don't necessarily have a rhyme or reason when I'm brain dumping. I'm just getting everything out that I need onto paper. Then once I do that, I will make categories because Again, I'm a planner. I will make categories of things that are tasks that are important, tasks that are that need to get done right now, that are priority, tasks that are important, but I could probably wait a day or two to get those done, and tasks that are low priority, meaning I need to get them done at some point in time. And I'll make that list and I'll take that information that I use from those brain that brain dump and I'll incorporate that into those different lists. That helps to keep me organized. I am a compartmentalizer, so my the way my brain works, I gotta have separate sections for different things. That's just how my mind works. And I also make sure that I protect my peace. I protect my peace every single day. I watch what I watch. I protect my ear gates, my eye gates, what I'm watching, what I'm listening to. I, you can't listen to everybody. You can't listen to everybody, and you cannot watch everybody, okay? You can't listen to everything. You can't watch everything. I am a very sensitive person spiritually. I know y'all probably know that. Spiritually, I'm a very sensitive person. So I am very mindful of the things that I watch and the things that I look at. 
Some days I'm not even online. People can discern you online. People can <laughs> discern your attitude. People can discern your spirit. People can discern you online. People know when it's authentic and when it's not. People know when you're shucking and jiving, when you're faking the funk, and when you're not. If I know that it's not really a good day for me, I won't even go online. I might go respond to some comments, but as far as like scrolling, I might post, but as far as like scrolling and looking at other people's stuff, I'm not. And you just have to protect your mental health like that. I don't really have um, instances in my life where I'm around toxic people because I don't do that. But if you do, you need to get, mm -mm -mm. We're, not, we're too old for this. We're not doing that. Okay. We're not doing toxic behaviors. We're not doing toxic people. We're not doing toxic situations. Pray for them, but that don't mean you have to be around them. Okay. Protect your peace by any means necessary. I don't argue with people. I don't go back and forth with people on any, in my personal life or in my, you know, online life. I don't do that. Healthy conversations. Yes. Difference of opinions. I don't mind, but disrespect. I don't do. Okay. That's one way I protect my peace. I also go to therapy once a week. Listen, therapy has changed my life for the better. My children are supportive. My husband is supportive. My family is supportive. But they are also voices of reason and truth in my life. My friends are voices of reason and truth in my life. You need people in your life that's going to say, uh-uh, uh-uh, the truth. Not the truth according to them. No, ma'am, that's incorrect. The truth according to having some morals and having some values and having some standards. I practice mindfulness, okay? I sit in the moment. Emotions are meant to be managed, not controlled. We don't control our emotions because they come to let us know that something's going on within us that we need to pay attention to, okay? So we don't, they're not meant to be controlled. They're meant to be managed. God gave us emotions. They're meant to be managed. We don't let them run us, but we do manage them. So if you're feeling depressed, okay, depression is here. I need to sit with why that is, or I need to sit with those uncomfortable feelings and they are uncomfortable. I need to sit with those uncomfortable feelings. And once they have their moment, then I can go on and about and do what it is that I need to do. I speak to myself. The Bible says life and death is in the power of the tongue and you'll have the fruit of what you eat. I speak to myself on a daily. If I'm tripping, I'll be like, all right now, girl. Girl, you cutting up. But I speak to myself. I speak what the word says. You know, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, Lord. My soul knows that, okay? When I get a little down, I speak, you know, before I in the morning. Girl, you beautiful. Girl, you that girl. You been that girl since 1996, okay? Girl, you just didn't get there. You be her. You just had to evolve on how you do certain things, but you've been that girl. Sometimes you got to talk to yourself. Sometimes you have to remind yourself of who you are, who God says you are. That's part of your mental health. That's part of your mental and spiritual health. Mental self-care also consists of knowing when to say no. And I check in with myself every day. I check in with myself every morning and kind of set my um, intentions or my goals for the day. I also make sure that I time block and schedule time for quiet moments and resets throughout the week, okay? You don't have to wait till Sunday to do a reset. If you need to do a reset on Wednesday, if you need to do a reset on Tuesday, if you need to do a reset on Friday night, you can reset whenever you feel like you want to or need to do one. I, y'all know I'm a Jesus girl. I love the Lord. I make sure that I pray, spend some time with the Lord just while it's quiet. Always done that. When my kids were younger, I used to be the 4 a.m. girl. Like, I used to get up at 4 a.m. and just like rush to spend time. Not rush, but run to spend time. I would look forward to my mornings with the Lord um, because I needed every little thing. I needed whatever daily bread he could give me throughout the day because I had a lot to do, girl. And I would cultivate those special moments, carve out time and just to cultivate that relation, my relationship with the Lord. You need a relationship with the Lord. Spiritual self-care, girl. I don't care nothing about all this extra stuff. All this extra stuff. Spiritual self-care, girl. It's so necessary. It affects the other areas of your life. Like, I would dare to say that this one is just as important. It's more important than physical because we talk about your soul. Everything is spiritual. And I know people will be like, yeah, I'll over-spiritualize. People do over-spiritualize a whole lot of things. 
But when you, once you realize how many things in life are actually spiritual, you'll move in a different way. You'll you will move in a different way. You'll fear the Lord in a different way. Everything that sounds good and glitters and talk about God, I make sure that I study in the mornings, I read my devotionals, or it doesn't have to be anything in depth. I just make sure that I get my time in with the Lord. My faith is a big part of how I stay grounded, okay? I know that if the Lord is my center, okay? Jesus is my center. I know that when life gets crazy or hectic and I'm all out here, I know that I can always return back to the source. I can always return back to my center. He keeps me grounded. I fast. I make sure that I praise because the Lord inhabits our praises. He lives in our praises and our worship. Worship is how we honor God. We honor God through our worship, okay? We were created for worship. And so I make sure that I worship day in, day out, just in the little things that I do. Even the homemaking I do around the house is worship because I do it as unto the Lord. Make sure the things that you do is, are unto the Lord. If you, you know, are a believer, if you are a believer. Um, and I also teach about the Word of God. I just make sure that I also pour spiritually into others because I'm called to do that. And then I make sure that I foster community that will strengthen me spiritually. So whether that's online, whether that's in person, I am big on community. So I make sure that I have a spiritual community that I can, that will feed my faith. Emotional and mental self-care kind of go hand in hand. Emotional self-care is more so getting into your emotions. So how I manage my emotions, I just, like I said, I deal with them as they come. Um, I deal with them as they come. And I'll, you know, sometimes I'll be praying. I did a lot through prayer, a lot through prayer reflection. I'll say, you know, Lord, why is this coming up? Or why am I dealing with this? You know, of course I take everything back to the Lord in prayer because that's just what we're called to do as believers. And I'll ask the Lord, you know, why am I feeling like this? I make sure that I take time out to process exactly how I'm feeling, why I'm feeling that way. Is there anything that may have triggered any negative feelings that I may be having? And I work through that. Um, therapy has helped me a lot with learning self-reflection. I reflect, you know, a lot. I am always, uh, always working on personal development <laughs> to the point where sometimes I'll be like, girl, you gotta take a break. Cause you, okay, you ain't always, you're not a project that needs constant fixing. <sighs> so that's the way I emotionally regulate knowing that I don't always have to work on myself all the time. I set boundaries. You need boundaries around what you can eat, how much you can tolerate, what you can and cannot deal with at the moment. You need boundaries around it. You need boundaries around friendships. And I also make sure that I end and begin my day, begin and end my day with gratitude. Ain't nothing like being grateful. How do you regulate your emotions? Like, what is it that you do to regulate more your emotions? Are you aware of things that trigger you in certain ways? Are you a Are you aware? of when you're entering into toxic behaviors and thought patterns. Like, what's your thought life like? Like, what are you thinking on? Our thoughts are not always according to reality. We have to be careful about the things that we think, and we also have to be careful about the things that we speak when we may not be in the best emotional state or the best mental health state. Another way I practice um, self-care is financially. Listen, I'm not a budget girl. However, boundaries, again, boundaries, you need a budget. So ways that we practice, um, ways that I practice financial health, my husband and I, you know, we both manage finances. So he's better at some things than I am. And that's okay. So we budget, um, save and investing. You need to have a savings account and you need to be making some type of inve investment. It doesn't have to be big to make sure that your money that you make is working for you. Social self-care, the friendships that I have, I treasure those because they are valuable people in my life. My good two to three friends that I have are gold, do you hear me, gold. And so those friendships are precious to me. So I make sure I do the things that I need to do in order to cultivate and nurture those relationships as well, because those are important. Your friendships with your girlfriends are important. You need them, okay? You need girl time. You need time where y'all could just be sitting around the house, just chatting about nothing. You need to make sure that you schedule time and also to connect with those friends and to maintain those friendships, you know? They need love and care as well. And last but not least, I practice marital self-care. 
I know that might be a new one, but I believe um, marriage is a big part. Those of us that are married, it's a big part of our lives. Like people's husbands and spouses be stressing them out. I'm not, we not, no ma'am. Mm -mm. You know, no, no. So we, marital self-care is how I nurture, just like I nurture my friendships, how I nurture my marriage, and how we nurture our marriage and keep our marriage alive, how we keep it, you know, spicy, how we keep it strong, how we keep it intentional. We do things like date night. Um, we're openly communicate, we openly communicate anyway, but like real raw in-depth communication and just transparent, being transparent and vulnerable with each other. You need date nights because you need to be able to reconnect with your spouse when there are no children around, when there's nobody else, you know, to take the attention off of your spouse. You need time that you both can come back to one another and reconnect with one another aside from the demands of the day, the demands of life, the demands of work, the demands of anything. You need to be able to maintain your marriage and you need to be able to pour into that. Marriage is work. It is work, but it's beautiful. It's a work. It's a good work. Like it's beautiful. And wives, I need you to understand the power that you carry as being a wife. We're going to talk more about that in our next video, but I need you to understand the power that you carry as a wife. It is not a small thing. And your husband has his place where he carries, you know, there's a special uh, place that he has to where, you know, certain things that he does in the relationship. But as a wife, as a wife, and as a wife that loves the Lord, uh, listen, baby, you're a powerhouse, okay? You are a powerhouse. You are a threat. You are everything how i also maintain marital self-care is i take care of myself like i take care of myself i take care of myself my husband takes care of himself we do all these things to maintain our self-care you know i keep my regular maintenance of stuff going on on the outside but i also make sure you know my body is intact as far as like you know taking showers and you know just doing little things like that. You know, just being a girl, just being a woman. Those are just some of the pillars that I use to kind of guide my life and the ways that I take care of myself. I do a little bit of each one of these things every day. So, you know, my physical self-care, of course, is gonna be my physical spirit. All of them are very important. No one is more important than the other one. And so I make sure that I, spiritual self-care is very important to me. So I find when that's intact, then everything else kind of falls into place. I can go in depth with each one of these things. The video is kind of long. I didn't want it to be that long, um, it's already long. I didn't want it to be that long, but I can kind of go in depth even more about some of these areas if you'd like me to. Just let me know by leaving me a comment below. And I also want to know some of the ways that you take care of yourselves in any of these areas. And are there some areas that you are lacking in? If so, let's chat about it in the comments because girl, going into 2025, we're going to have everything it is that we need. You already have everything it is that you need. Sometimes you just got to wait for it to come into fruition. Anyway, y'all know I love you. I appreciate you. Hey to all the new people. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe if you like these kinds of videos because we can keep it going. Our next video that you'll see will be a fall vlog. Look for that. And we're going to have our wife chat. I'm also going to do some go live and do some things over here as well. But in the meantime, you can follow me over on all my social channels on Instagram, TikTok, and Threads. And where I talk about, you know, things like this, of course. And that's it. I love you all. Thank you again for watching. And I'll see you all later on in the week.